All right, y'all, we're gonna get right into it. And I got my stapler from Amazon. It's the Amazon Basics brand. When I was purchasing these, you were still able to purchase them in a 12 pack, and then you would get them for $3 a piece, which was wonderful. Um, but right now I think they're like up to six, seven dollars a piece, which is still not bad. The first thing we're gonna do here to take this apart is to try to get that spring down there. And you do that by slightly pushing that piece of the stapler back and this long piece that goes where the staples go just detaches itself. What I like to do is to put the spring and the staples back in the box as well as that stapler piece that we're not gonna use. You just take this off its hinges, if you will, and you do that, you're gonna feel like you're breaking it, but you're not breaking it. Um, so once you get one side, the other side will just clip off very easily. And then I just put everything in the box and tuck it away for later. What we're gonna do now is sand the stapler. Um, we're doing this because I am using spray paint, so I want my spray paint to have something to grip on and adhere to, just like we do with tumblers. The way I cleaned my stapler was you could just get up and go wash it on the seat at the sink, but I just grabbed 91% alcohol, a paper towel, and I'm just wiping it clean. After this step, I'm going to put it on a cardboard box and take it outside to spray paint it using the Rust-Oleum 2 times flat white spray paint. Um, having these little, if you have extra boxes, cutting out those boxes will really um, come in handy if you're doing a bulk of these at once. I am going to be using the Brea Reese Neon Alcohol Inks. I got mine from Counterculture. Um, I do have a 10% off code that you can use. Um, a lot of the, We're going to be using a lot of products from them. Um, I am affiliated with them, so you'll find those in the description of this video. For this part of applying base colors, the reason I apply base colors to begin with is so that I don't have to apply two coats of glitter so that I get more coverage. Um, that's why covering whatever your canvas is with the base colors of what you plan to use is very helpful. I'm just using this tape um, to basically separate where I want the eraser or the pink part of uh, my pencil stapler to be. And I'll do that with um, the gold, the silver, and the black part of this uh, pencil stapler and then at the not the very end but the last thing I'll do as far as base coloring goes is go in and do the rainbow ombre if you will with my alcohol inks if you do not have alcohol inks you can also use alcohol ink markers um, you don't have to you can definitely use acrylic paint you don't have to go out and buy these alcohol inks or alcohol ink markers I just to work more efficiently, I do a lot of these, so alcohol ink will dry very, very quickly. I can very much immediately go in, apply UV resin, and apply my glitter, and I don't have to wait like I would with acrylic paint. Sometimes it can be a pain, and it takes a while to dry. Um, and when I say immediately, like I literally, by the time I'm done putting the alcohol inks away and come back to begin to apply my UV resin and my glitter, it's already dry which is like less than five minutes so that's why i prefer this method if you don't get straight lines like i did here this is kind of when the alcohol ink markers come in handy or to be honest if you have sharpies or anything i'm pretty sure it would work just as well i've never done it that way so i'm not sure if it'll smear or not i just know that the inks won't smear or the alcohol ink markers won't smear so that's why i do it this way um but you will see me use alcohol ink markers as well. Those are are by Marabou, and I remember getting them in some sort of giveaway back when I started four years ago from Mr. Nola's. I do believe they still sell them on their west on their website. So, if not, I'm sure any other alcohol ink markers will work if you were looking to get the same ones and then I basically use what I have this is like a silver gray marker that I had and that's what I'm using um, so I didn't go out and get anything new I just used everything I had and I do try to make use the most out of my materials so this green tape here I reuse it once it's dry for a different color 
Um, so yeah, just work with what you got, use what you have. You don't have to go out and purchase new items to do this. I will say that with the alcohol inks, a little goes a long way. I poured way too much in this little uh, paint palette thing, plastic, whatever is underneath here. You don't need all that. A little bit goes a long way. Um, and you do want to start off not dipping the entire brush in the alcohol ink because it'll just spread and it just makes a mess. So just dip a little bit, just the tip, and you'll be fine. When it comes to that middle rainbow ombre part that we're gonna do of this um, pencil stapler thing that we're doing here, I will say as far as measurement goes, cause I feel like some of you may be wondering, well, how did you know how much surface area to cover in pink and how much to do in orange and how much to do in yellow? If we're talking specifics, my brush was about half inch size. So I kind of kept it that way. I tried to cover each color of the Roy G. Biv. Well, not red, because I replaced red with pink um, with a half inch sized brush. So I could keep each color about the same size or width. Um, and really, I just used it as a guide. It's okay if the colors kind of run into each other. That'll give it more of a realistic look as far as ombre goes. Um, and again, it's just a guide. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if your glitter colors, you know, move a little bit further down than they're supposed to be. So after you've let your alcohol inks dry, I am going, what you see me doing here is taping off everything but that middle part. Cause I'm going to do my rainbow ombre glitter part of the stapler first. So I'm basically using this tape to help keep those clean lines all of these well not all of them the pink orange yellow green and blue glitters are from bailey over at witchcrafts by bailey i do have i will have her link if you guys want to get these glitter colors these are the ones that came out in her collab box with heidi from north 80. and then for my purple i will be using a glitter from mr nola's called Actually, I don't know the name of this glitter, but I'll be sure to have the name of it in the description of the video. And for the black, I'm using a glitter from the Wildflower Glitter Company. And the gold is going to be one from Peachy Olives. Actually, the gold and silver are both from Peachy Olives. So I basically start color by color. Um, you will not contaminate these. What I mean by that is usually when you're working with like Mod Podge, um, or even epoxy you can very easily contaminate your glitter even on your project or on your canvas when you're working but the difference between that and the stapler is that we're using uv so if i wasn't doing this tutorial for you guys i'd be sticking these staplers right underneath the sun because they cure so quickly which is why i cut up cardboard boxes and use that to go in and out um, and just place them where the sun is the sunlight is hitting them directly um, but basically, I go color by color. Um, I did put a layer of UV resin. It's it's a very thin layer. You don't need a, a thick layer. Um, and I do this once I have my rainbow completely covered. I'll stick it under the UV light, I think, two or three times. I believe at 100 or 120 seconds each time. And then I move on to the next color. We really don't need to seal until the very end, right before we are about to cover the entire stapler in its first coat of uv resin and as far as the glitters go i do know that initially these only came with her collab box that she did with heidi from north 80. however i did speak to bailey and she said that these would be available individually for purchase on her website um right now they are my favorite neons to use they're very very shiny as you can see they're just sitting in a cup and there's really just a lamp over them and they're just very very vibrant um this is before we move on to the rest of the stapler this is the part where i said i'm putting it under here for i think three times under the light um but if you have direct sunlight just go do that i just didn't feel like doing that with all this filming equipment so once i've cured the middle portion of this i will now be taping off to only have access to the silver portion of my pencil and the gold portion of my 
pencil stapler usually for the gold i do the zigzag like a normal more realistic pencil but after creating hundreds of these it's just a pain so now i just do a very much straight line um and people don't seem to care so i don't think it's that big of a deal but basically i'm taping these both off so that i can again get clean lines crisp crisp lines when i'm applying the uv resin and glitter to the gold and the silver portion we will then cure that and then move on to the black and the pink for these parts i do love to use a brush and no worries your brush will not go to waste you will not ruin your brush just make sure to clean it with 91% alcohol in a paper towel and it'll be just like new. However, if you do forget about your brushes, you can pretty much say goodbye to them. Um, the first time I did this with the brush, I definitely did forget about them and I just had to chuck them to the trash. Luckily, they were very affordable. Um, but I just got this big set of brushes from Walmart um, for these specific tasks where I may or may not forget to clean the brush afterwards. Since we're moving on to this pink portion, the eraser portion of my pencil stapler and the black portion, we no longer need tape because it's the only surface area left to apply UV to. However, I am still using a brush to try to get those crisp lines, kind of like you would with Mod Podge. Um, for this black glitter, it is the chunkiest glitter of them all, um, but I use the same parchment paper right underneath to kind of um, tap and smooth out that glitter so that it's not bumpy. Um, and rough. Typically, when we're working on tumblers, we would let it spin a while and then go with parchment paper to flatten it. But because this is UV and it will be curing right away, we don't want to do that. But once you have cured the entire stapler and you've put it under the UV light multiple times, I just took that Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray that you saw and applied two very good coats outside, brought it back in within 20 minutes. It was completely dry. And now is when I'm going in with my CC DIY UV resin to apply a very generous coat, um, overall coat, my first overall coat to the stapler. I have tried many UV resins and the one from CC DIY, not only does it not have a funky smell, but it is the thickest. So therefore I use less of it. it the viscosity of it is very thick, um, which I like also. If you try to make an indent with your nail or anything like that, it won't happen because it cures very, very well. Um, I do like to use my own UV lamp just because the wattage on it is a lot greater than the one that CC DIY has. But in all honesty, I prefer direct sunlight anyway. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. Before we move on to the next part, you want to make sure that you apply two very generous coats and that it's mostly smooth i also turn it on its back to make sure the bottom of it is cured in case i got anything down there and it's not sticking to anything else when i go to apply my vinyl or whatever the next process of it is um, sometimes you might not think that you get it under there but a little bit will sneak under there and we'll clean it at the very end and i'll show you how to do that but this is the second coat that i'm applying I'm gonna let this cure and then we'll come back and apply that clear vinyl. Once you have this completely cured, you're going to want to grab a piece of extra parchment paper. That's what I used. And I basically trace slash outline um, the dimensions of where I'm going to be applying that vinyl so that I don't waste my clear vinyl. I try my best to save products as much as I can, but this is me just tracing the actual template of where that vinyl is going to be applied onto the surface area. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be much better than just cutting out a large piece and then getting rid of most of it. Once I do this, I grab scissors and I actually cut out the outline of whatever I traced. And then what I do is I will place um, this template I guess over the vinyl that I'm gonna use and I just make light markings with my pencil this clear transparent zebra vinyl um, is from Heidi over at North 80 you guys know that I love her and her design so much um, everything will be found in the description of the video I know I've said that but just in case you skipped around um, and we do have a code that you guys can use so once I cut this out 
from this bigger piece. What I do is just, before I peel the backing, I just make sure that it fits that surface area where I'm gonna want it. And what I love about her vinyls is once I pull it off the backing and I begin to position it, I can take this vinyl off and reapply or pull and tug it and it's not gonna rip on me. Um, because the surface area of the stapler where this is going has like a weird area to it, meaning it's not straight, it's curved, it's a little bit more difficult to apply, but you just pull in those areas where you need to and make slits, that'll help you kind of create pockets where you can release those air bubbles that make it um, stuck under there and smooth this out. Once I do that, I really just take my little box cutter slash X-Acto knife that I use and trim off any excess of that vinyl that I have on both sides of the stapler. If I don't get it exactly, I don't worry about it because when I take this outside to Dremel and clean the bottom, I'll get it then. You will also see me kind of um, just take that box cutter knife and make slits wherever I see bubbles they're very easy and because not only are they easy to get out and um, squeeze out push out whatever um, the vinyl because it's transparent has a lot of give so you won't be able to see them as you would like on a printed pattern vinyl where you can definitely tell if it's been scratched or whatever um, that's what I love about transparent vinyl once I trim away all of the excess vinyl, um, including you know where the silver line is and where my gold is, uh, don't forget to trim that away as well like you see me doing here. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna apply, um, I guess, pinstripes of vinyl. The one I'm using is a Rainbow Holographic from Tech Wrap, and I just cut all my stuff out in bulk. I never throw any of the extra away um, because I use it for things like this. It is, I know, 11.5 inches in width and I believe 0.10 in height, if I'm not mistaken. But basically, I apply this and I will leave just a little bit hanging off of the stapler so that I am able to trim it off correctly. Um, I've learned that if I do it too close to the stapler, maybe it's just me, but it gives me a harder time to clean it up and clean up the bottom edges if I do it right at the at the edge of the stapler. We're gonna do this to separate the silver part of the pencil as well as the gold part of the pencil and then try to cut it down as much as we can and we will then go in to apply our last two coats um, or not last two coats but another two coats of uv resin before we take it outside to sand you want to make sure that you have this covered you, you want to treat it just like you would a tumbler and make sure that you have this covered in uv resin really well um, before you go into sand to avoid scratching the vinyl or glitter or anything of the sort so we're really aiming for a smooth surface and if that takes three coats then so be it but just make sure that your surface is smooth before you go in um, to take it out to sand. I managed to get a smooth in two coats of UV resin, which you see me applying the first one here. I stick it under the light for about three times um, at 120 seconds each time. And then I will apply a second coat and then do the same thing before we take it outside and clean it up. Another thing you wanna make sure is not only that it's covered really well in UV resin, but make sure you let it cure completely. Um, really well as well just because we don't want it to be sticky when we go to sand I'm using this 60 grit sanding block as well as this Dremel and the Dremel bit they are all in my Amazon store as well but this is my way of cleaning off the bottom so that when they open the stapler it's not messy and dirty and it gives it more of a clean look um, but basically on a really low setting I will go by kind of like we give tumblers a rim job and expose that stainless steel we're really just trying to expose the black part of this stapler on the bottom that was there before we covered it in glitter and more gunk um, but i basically take my time it does not take a lot of effort you definitely don't want to apply the same amount of pressure that you would for a tumbler if you were doing a rim job this does not need that much pressure in fact if you are not careful you will go into the stapler and then 
begin to sand off the actual stapler. So don't be too rough on this part. Take your time with it. Um, but that's basically how I clean the bottom of them. And then I'll take the sanding block and just go over the edge just to make sure that it's smooth and not rough to the touch, um, as well as give it a pretty nice sand all over in the back of the stapler. Um, the reason I do this, again, it's to just give it, give it the as clean of as a look as I can. I did try showing you here, but my camera was not as focused as I would like it to be. But anyway, I just kept going and kept cleaning it until I was satisfied with the look of it. Um, you can clean this with 91% alcohol in a paper towel when you're finished, but just to be safe because I am sanding, I just take it under the sink and wash it and rinse it with water. I don't use Dawn soap, I just water in a paper towel and it'll be and it'll do just fine. Once we do that and our stapler is completely clean and dry, make sure you dry it, um, we are gonna apply our last coat of UV resin. You can see here the scuff marks from the sanding and we clean the bottom and it looks just a lot cleaner and more of a sleek look than it did before. Um, but basically, I'm generous with the last coat. Um, I apply as much as I can without it making a mess and dripping everywhere. If you were to ask me how much UV resin I use, I have no idea, I have zero idea. But um, I go in and give it this one last overall cover, generous cover, stick it under my light three or four times and we'll then put it together and we'll have a complete stapler now if you were just doing the yellow pencil you would basically skip the middle part and instead of glittering an ombre or a rainbow you would just do yellow um but i wanted to show you how to do a more i guess intricate design don't forget to get the bottom just in case it's a little sticky or whatever um, just to be safe and it doesn't stick to anything but if you're outside just flip it over just make sure that the area where you're flipping it over on is clean underneath but this is this is a finished look before we put it together it's very shiny that's another reason why I love their UV resin but now that we're putting it together you just grab that box where you put everything inside of and we begin to attach all the parts together to make it look like it did before we took it apart um, so those two little I don't really know what to call them hinges um, it basically it's like a bar that slides to each side once you clip on one end you really just have to I, I don't want to say force, but really that's what I'm doing. I kind of force it in on the other side and it feels like you might be breaking it. I don't know how else to explain that, but you're not. It'll clip on just like you did when you took it off. Um, I kind of mess with it to make sure it's like on an even, they're, it's going into each hole of the stapler evenly. We put this little metal spring right where the plus or the X is. And then when you close your stapler you want to make sure that when you push this down just like when we took it apart it needs to go inside the little slit so you'll hear it click just like it did there well you can't hear but i can and then you close it and that's ready to go and when they open this and put staples inside it'll be good to go but i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know if you'd like to see this in a different design or if there's a different tutorial that you'd like me to show you and i'm more than happy to do that thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one